Alrighty, welcome back. This is Aussie Gamer 17 and we're playing some more Thimbleweed Park. This is our 100% uh, walkthrough. And here we are at the start of part four. It's called The Will. And at the start, we actually want to do... We can't actually... Oh, no, we can go up. We'll, we'll have to check that when we get back. What you want to do is cycle through all of your characters. So use one of the triggers. Oh, oh I'm, you know, really dead. It's just starting to, you know, sink in. I'm never going to hold my Dolores again. I never told her how proud I was of her for getting that job designing games. I was, you know, too afraid of what Chuck would think. Now I'm dead. I don't remember who killed me or why I'm trapped in this hotel. I need to find a way to escape from here. There has to be a way out. A magical book or a spell? Oh, Franklin, now you're going insane. That only works in games. Okay, and there's the big hint. If you try and... Oh, why is he doing that? Okay. If you try and go out the front door, you won't be able to. Um, and he just gave us the hint. The only way to leave the hotel as Franklin is with a magic well, book. Back. Having a look at the uh, to-do list. We've got to try and talk to Dolores. We've got to visit Chuck's tomb. That's why we need to leave the hotel and escape to the afterlife. Well, we'll see about that later. All right, now cycle through to the next character. Ah, I can't believe I got over again. What did I do to deserve this treatment? All I wanted to do was entertain people and make them laugh at the stupidity of stupid people. I feel like there's a lesson in all of this, but you. I'm Ransom the Clown. Yeah. It's all that Franklin's fault. He was gonna talk to Chuck about putting my new high-tech Ransom the Clown licensed dolls into production at the old pillow factory. Then he flaked out. He's probably in Mexico skinny dipping with my next wife. Okay, I need to break into that pillow factory and see if my prototype Ransom the Clown doll is still in there. My comeback depends on it. You! Alright, and once he's finished his yabbering, we can uh, check his to-do list. I've found that you have to do this, I think, in order to get... Uh, actually, I won't, I won't say it because it's a spoiler, but just make sure you do this at some point, and I'll tell you later why. Um, okay, so his remaining things are to try removing makeup again, break into the pillow factory, and find the missing joke book page. That's the one that blew out the window of his trailer earlier. Alright, and now we should go be able to go back to Dolores, and you'll see that we can't actually access I the two can't agents because they've feel. left. There was something suspicious about Uncle Chuck's death. He was a bit eccentric, but deep down he had always been a caring and thoughtful uncle. But... In the last few years, he became obsessed, and more than usual, with that pillow factory. I need to get inside and see if anything in his old office will help me make sense of it all. I owe it to him to find out what happened. Okay, and then same with Dolores, just check her journal as well. Um, find out what happened to Dad, get inside the pillow factory, uh, and get the lawyer to read Uncle's will. So it's a few things carried over from the last uh, part of the game. All right, and just a quick reminder that we're doing a full playthrough without picking up any specks of dust, so be careful there. Okay, what we want to do is head to the hotel. We're going to sort of work on um, getting the lawyer to come and read the will. Um, and the first step for that is to head to the hotel. Got a few other things that we're going to be setting up while we're here though. So head inside the hotel. Walk faster. There we go. And we're going to head all the way to the right and go up the stairs. And we're going to try and head in here. The lawyer is actually in the thimble con. Alright, so just try and walk in and the... Uh, Dragon suit guy will stop us. None shall pass without showing me their ticket first. Oh, and welcome to ThimbleCon, of course. All right, and we want to ask him, how can we get how a ticket? Can we get a ticket? The radio is doing a competition to win tickets. 
You could try your luck by calling up when they announce it. Okay, we'll uh, get more on that in just a minute. The other objective that you've seen for a few of the people is to get into the abandoned factory. We're just gonna go here and check. Um, this is basically just to tell us what the first step of actually getting in is going to be. Head down the path. I think you only have to head down this path the first time you come here, I think. And what we're gonna do is look at the uh, padlock and chain. It's a padlock and chain, keeping the gate closed. Okay, so we can't actually get in. For some reason, they can't even just jump. None of the characters can even just jump over this tiny little fence. Anyway. Okay, there's nothing else we can do here for now. So we're going to head into town, actually. And we're going to set something else up for a little bit later. We want to head to basically the north... Uh, sorry, south of uh, Main Street. We're going to be looking for the diner. Okay, there it is. Perfect. Okay, so you need to Free talk to coupon. Chet, this guy in the pizza costume outside pizza here. And what meeting. we actually want to do is we want to actually scare him so that he pizza runs away meeting. and drops something. Pizza coupon. Wink, wink. All right, just say, do we know each other? Do we know each other? Wait a second. You look familiar. <laughs> Weren't we in freshman chem class together? What's your name? And he's actually scared of Dolores for some reason, um, which we're about to find out. Um, so make sure you just uh, tell the truth. Dolores. I know who you are. You're Dolores Edmund. You and your uncle Chuck were working on mind control, Ray, to remove our free will before he died. And it doesn't matter what you choose here. Yikes. D don't play dumb with me. I know you put bugs in our pillows. <laughs> Never take me alive. Ah! There we go. That's all we needed. And he's dropped a little flyer there. We're going to pick that up. And you can have a quick look at it, but it's not going to come into play until a, a bit later in the game. I guess the important part is this drop by our secret meeting. Don't touch the electric fence and the code there. Uh, I'm not sure if that's random or not. I actually haven't paid enough attention. Uh, but it probably is knowing the game. So keep in mind that, but we'll... we'll There'll be more on that a little bit later. Now, what we want to do is head into the diner and hopefully we've done enough to have a little uh, other thing become available. All right. No, not yet. Okay. So what I want here is for the... Uh, it's going to be a little bit of a spoiler, but I want the two agents to become available, um, which they haven't yet. And we're going to get a little uh, cutscene eventually um, when they do become available. So what we want to do is walk around with Dolores until that does happen. So what, what I'll do, um, I'll leave this in the video actually. I was thinking I might just cut this out. But we're going to head into A Street, head back to Main Street. If it doesn't work, then we'll, we'll cut it out after that. But we just need to just get a few loading screens or... I guess there aren't really loading screens, are they? But just the game loading back and forth. Oops, go down there a couple of times. And then try going into the diner again. I haven't figured out exactly what triggers this. Okay, still not there. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to repeat that a couple of times, but I'll probably cut the video. Um, all I'm going to do is walk to A Street to B Street and back into the diner and see if that helps us, so uh, I'll be back in just a second. Okay, so here we go. I had just left, um, went to A Street, went to B Street again, here and back nothing. into the diner, and then here we go. I'm checking in. Certainly, Abu. Here is your room key. We're not controlling anything here, it's just a cutscene. I'd like to check in, please. Certainly, Abu. I wonder who these two people are checking into the hotel.
All right, now we can actually switch between both agents. All right, what we want to do is switch over to Ray, and we're actually going to work on grabbing an achievement, but that's after we access this telephone. You have one new message. Message one. You know who this is? You must be close to achieving our goal. We sent a package to the front desk for you. It is required for the next stage. Sayonara. No yeah. more new messages. Okay. Um, that's just to move on the, move the, hotel along the story. The 3000 seems to think Oops. this bed is made. I did not mean to do that. Um, what we want to do is look at the phone book. And we're going to work on the achievement, No One Is Home. And what we actually need to do, it's a little bit uh, frustrating, but we have to listen to 100 voicemail messages. And that's technically not accurate. We don't actually have to listen to the full thing. I'll show you the first couple here. Let's, uh, but the first thing we need to do uh, is look at the uh, phone book. And the reason I'm doing this with Ray is because I want to actually, uh, we're going to start at A, use her mobile phone. It's a little bit easier, or cell phone, I guess. If you're listening to this in America, that's what it's called. Either way, the phone in her inventory. All right, and what we need to do is call any of the bolded numbers, well, not any of the bolded numbers, we need to call 100 of these bolded numbers. And I'm just gonna start at the start here. Let's do 8735. So use her phone. 8735. The numbers that aren't bolded won't work. Now, as soon as the message starts playing, you can actually back out. So that one, I can't even understand anyway. Um, and we're going to do this another, probably another 98 times. I'm not sure if that first message that we just heard um, as part of the story counts or not. Um, obviously, I'm not going to keep all 100 in the video. I'll cut the video. Let's do one more just to make sure. Um, but then I'll cut the video. So you've got a tick there. You can see that. So you know which ones you've done. 5094. Uh, use her phone again. I just find it easier to press these numbers. 5094. Yo, we are out. Try our mobiles. May the foster be with you. <laughs> oh, God. Okay. Well, there's another one. And I guess they could be, uh, it could be valuable to listen to them because some of them might be a little bit funny, uh, but it might be, might get a bit tedious um, doing 100 of them. All right, I'm going to cut the video here and I'll join you guys back up at about number 99, I reckon. There's the achievement. No one is home. Whew. Okay. Thank God for that. That actually took quite a while, guys. Um, there's some really good funny ones in there. There's some really good cringe-worthy ones in there. There's some just plain old boring ones. And there's a fair few that weren't in English. But there we go. We have got the achievement. All right. Now we can uh, open the door. And we've automatically switched over to Reyes. And we need to do the same thing. We need to listen to the uh, message on the phone. You have one new message. Message one. Hola, soy mamá. ¿Recuerdas la, la vieja promesa que me hiciste sobre papá? He enviado un paquete a recepción. And he's um, been sent a package to the front desk as well. Pronto. Boy, that, that was quite tedious no getting through messages. all those phone messages, guys. But, oh well. Okay, and we need to open the door as well here. Here's your package, boo. Thank you. So, Agent Ray's got, I mean, whoever that is has got her package. Oh, this is just great. Is that you, Reyes? No, I'm not Reyes. Drop the act, that's the worst disguise I've ever seen. Hmm. Then I guess you haven't looked in the mirror lately. Touché. What are you doing back in town? I knew something was up with you. Same here, Sherlock. I don't think either of us were being honest. Yeah. I think it's time we came clean and told the truth about why we're in Thimbleweed Park. You first. Okay. 
Now, I do believe you can tell the truth here, and either way, it doesn't matter which dialogue you choose here in terms of story progression or achievements. So you can do whatever you like. Um, but the true story for Reyes, I believe, is this one here. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to stick to the story as I have throughout the playthrough. I'm investigating the old pillow factory fire that killed my father. I was wondering why you kept asking about the fire. I figured it was just some perverted pyro fetish. My father was a security guard there. How old were you? I was only five. Okay. All right, try to clear his I'm name. I'm here to try and clear his name and prove it was Chuck's fault. Clearing your dad's name is a very noble cause. I'm sorry I've given you such a hard time. I need to get into that factory. I'm sure there is evidence in there that will clear his name. Now, why are you really here? Well... And I'm not sure what the uh, real reason for Agent Ray is, even having finished the game now. Um, but, uh, oh, and uh, that reminds me, you did see the uh, achievement pop up. I haven't quite got as far as I got on my stream playthrough yet, but um, I never did bother getting that achievement during the stream, so that's why that one actually worked on uh, on this recording. Um, and we should be starting to see a few more pop on screen finally. Anyway, I'm going to choose the most right answer, I think. I'm here to find the secrets to the Pillow Factory AI for the NSA. It involves top secret national security. That's pretty important. Sounds like we both need to get into the Pillow Factory. Let's work together on this And one. they're not the only Total ones. Honesty. Wow. National security. That's some heavy NSA stuff. Let's split up. It will go faster. Good idea. Sir, I have a package of boo for you. Okay, and now we here we are in control of Reyes. We're just going to open his package just to show you guys what's in there. We don't need yes! it just yet. It's my father's watch. Okay, and now we're going to switch to Agent Ray. I need Ray, to get into the factory eventually. to get my prototype doll back. I don't know how she got all the way up here. Where is she? There she is. I'm just going to look in her thing just to um, get it to stop wobbling. Steal the secret to the Pillow Factory AI, break into the Pillow Factory, get key to Factory Gate, and win tickets to Nerdy ThimbleCon. Alright, as Ray, we're going to open her package as well. And once again, this is something that's not going to come in handy it's a until... special tool for a special use. ...much later in the game, even if you look at it. It's a very you. strange looking tool. Oh. I'm sure it has a very important there we go. use near the end near of the, the game. Near the end of the game. Right, she is. Okay, with Ray, we're going to go to B Street. Here we go. And we want to go to the phone book. Simply because this is probably the closest to the next thing for Ray. It's out of order. The coin slot is filled with glue, the buttons are missing, and the cord to the receiver is cut. I didn't leave any notes for why it's ringing like this. I don't remember. Let me see if I can use it since it's ringing. It's out of order. But yeah, I get that. Ringing? Yeah. Who knows? Anyway, we need to look at the phone book. Ooh. Maybe this is. Nah. Anyway, anyway, it's not important. We need to look at the phone book, and we need to get the phone number for. K Scum Radio. It is random, I do believe. Um, that's the other thing I was going to show you guys. That's where I got up to, I think this was the fifth page for A. Um, that's where we got up to to get the full 100, just for anyone wondering. So we're going to go to K and find K Scum Radio. There it is, the one in red. I think it's random again. Um, although that uh, that does seem familiar as to what it was last time. Anyway, just remember the number. For me, it is 7286. And now we need to switch to Dolores. And with Dolores, we're going to go into our map. 
And first thing I'm gonna do is just, um, we're gonna work on getting those Thimbleweed tickets in just a second, but first we're gonna go to the circus. Why isn't it? There we go. And we're gonna go inside. And we need this to be Dolores because the agents can't actually go inside the circus without a warrant. Now, just place Dolores anywhere there and then what we need is Ransom. Okay, and he's gonna do the same. We're gonna to go to the circus. <laughs> and go over towards his trailer. Now, what we wanna do is push this um, trampoline all the way over to the left. If you try and jump on it, let's see what he says. Let's say, use trampoline. I need to be higher to jump on it. And what we need to do is jump from up here. Two things that he'll say if you try and jump on it from up here. Well, that's too far to jump from here. And then when we push it over, if Dolores wasn't there, he'd say, I can't jump without a spotter. So anyway, we need to push the trampoline. I think it's push. It might even be pull, actually. I think it's pull. I'll just show you anyway. It's my old trampoline. Brings back memories. Okay, now, if you're standing on this side, we can push it. So that's okay. No. Okay, it looks like you have to click the right side of the trampoline when you're saying push or pull. There we go. That looks close enough. Let's get it up there. I was having a bit of trouble there um, getting him to push it the right way or pull it the right way or whatever it might be. Okay, and with Dolores here, he's gonna call her over and use her as a spotter. I'm gonna jump on this trampoline and you'll see hey, why. spotter, you're in the wrong spot. You want me to break my neck? Be careful. So you okay. do have to be ready. Here to I click go. on the missing joke book page. Not while I'm not while I'm jumping. There we go. I got it. You just got to make sure you click on it. Okay. Now we've got the last book, uh, the last page. We're going to use the page with the joke book. Got the page stuck back into the joke book. All right, perfect. Now we're gonna switch back to Dolores and start working on getting these ThimbleCon or continue working on getting these ThimbleCon tickets. All right, so open up the map. And what we wanna do is go to the radio station. If I haven't already showed you where it is, that's the place right here. Gonna walk behind the radio station. And we're actually gonna, uh, sabotage the phone system of the radio station. So if you don't do this, the, the way to get the tickets is to ring the radio station number. Uh, but if you try and ring it without um, doing this step, it's always the busy, uh, the line is busy. So what we're gonna do is we are going to use the tube puller. And we're gonna take the vacuum tube out. KSCUM's phone system is now out of order. All right, and now we are gonna switch back to Ray and we're gonna use her phone. Let me just double check that number, 7286. Gonna use, um, no, sorry, we're not gonna use her phone. 7286, we're gonna walk back to Main Street and we're gonna go inside the diner. And we're going to walk over to this side of the diner and we're going to use the radio and it's going to give us the uh, prompt to call the radio station. Hello, 198.7 FM KSCUM listeners. DJ Cassie here. We interrupt our hostile takeover of the airwaves with this important announcement. I have four free ThimbleCon 87 tickets to give away. First caller who can answer our trivia questions wins. And now, back to our regularly scheduled hostile. All right, now that we've heard that, we're gonna quickly put this tube back in. And as soon as we put the tube back in, we need to switch to Ray and call the number straight away. Oh, that didn't work. Come on, use vacuum tube. Kay. There we go. Okay, now make sure you save your game. 
and then quickly use the telephone and call the number. And because we're going to be given a little quiz here. Hello, caller. You're live on KSUM. Hello. Correctly answer two out of three questions to win four ThimbleCon 87 tickets. Your first question is, name the American who won four gold medals at the 1984 Olympics. Okay, now you're gonna need uh, the internet unless you get the same questions as me, but I've noticed they are very, very random. Um, but they're usually some, uh, you know, trivia questions that you'd be able to look up on the internet. Now, the answer to the um, American who won four gold medals at the 1984 Olympics, I believe, is Carl Lewis. That's correct. Here's your second question. What are Vice President Bush's middle initials? Ooh, Vice President Bush's middle initials. Okay, I believe there was a bit of a hint in the quiz question because it said initials, not singular. So the only answer with two is HW, so choose that one. You got it right. And your final question. Where were the much boycotted 1980 Summer Olympic Games held? And the 1980 Olympics were held in Moscow. You got it! Let's see how you did. You got three out of three. A perfect score! You win four ThimbleCon 87 tickets. You can pick them up at the Edmund Hotel front desk. What's your name? Um, my name. And you can... You can put anything you want here. Um, let's just say Ron Gilbert, just for fun. A big shout out to him for uh, creating the game, basically, or being one of the creators. Thank you, and congratulations. Now back to our regularly scheduled hostile takeover of the airwaves. Okay, and now we need to go to the hotel with Agent Ray and pick up the tickets. Head over here and talk to the manager. Welcome to the Edmund Hotel, most beautiful hotel abu in the Tri-Thimbleweed Park County area. How the only I hotel. Of service? And there should be some ThimbleCon tickets in there my name. There should be some ThimbleCon tickets in my name. Yes, I do have tickets from the K-Scum Abu Trivia Contest. What is your name, Abu, please? Don't you, can't you just tell? I look like Ron Gilbert, don't I? Ah, yes. Here's your name, Abu, on the list. How else may I be Abu of service? Ah, that's it, I think. I'm going to check out your, um, interesting lobby. Goodbye. Have a nice evening, Abu. All right, we've got all four tickets now, and you don't have to waste your time going and handing them in to handing them over to each individual character. That need that may or may not need. Shut to up the in there. Thimblecon. No one will ever carry a computer around in their pocket. Hmm. None shall pass without showing me their ticket first. Oh, and welcome to Thimblecon, of course. All right. Here's my ticket. Here's my ticket. Thank you. I'll take the tickets for your friends while you're here. Saves time so you can live long and proper. God, uh, prosper. There we go. So he's taken the tickets um, for all the other characters as well. This here is the lawyer that we need to speak to with Dolores. We're actually going to switch over to Dolores. Oops. And what we're going to do though first is go to her map again. Uh, before the lawyer will actually accept coming and uh, reading the will, he is going to say that we need to prove that we have paid for it. And to do that, we picked up a check stub from our uncle's um, check account book earlier. And we're going to go use that at the bank. If you tried to come to the bank uh, in a previous part of the game, it would have been locked or shut. Um, but now we can go in. Head over to the bank manager. And we're going to have to wait. Hello, Until thank he's you for saving. Your money is in our hands. Is this an obscene phone call? All right. And now that he's not talking on the phone, I'm going to give him this check stub. Yes, how can I help you, Miss Edmund? Can you help me with this check stub? Oh, yes. This handwriting brings back a flood of memories. 
Too bad about Mr. Edmund. He was such a wonderful man. Excuse me. I'm sorry. How can I help you? I need a copy of the check that goes with this stub. Yes, I believe I kept all of Mr. Edmund's cancelled checks right here. Here it is. Thank you. Alright. Hello, we've got what we need. Savings. We can leave. Your money oh, is in our action. hands. We can just go straight into our map. Is this an obscene phone call? Alright. And now we need to head to the hotel. And go into ThimbleCon. Once again, the uh, doorman dude has our Shut ticket already, there. so we can just go I straight in. First. And now we want to talk Tubular. to the lawyer, Mr. Brand. Do you need some cosplay advice? Oh, hi, Dolores. What brings you back to Thimbleweed Park? Okay, just choose the top option here. I have a cancel check. check for you. It clearly that really says means. that you were paid by Uncle Chuck to read the will. That it does. My apologies. I'll go to the mansion mansion right away. Off he goes. And now we're going to meet him there. So go to your map. And go to the mansion. And up to the library. I see we are all here now. Excellent. Before we can proceed with the reading of the will, Chuck Edmund has three stipulations. One, Thimbleberry Pie must be served to all present. Two, the reading of the will must take place in Chuck's opulent tomb. Three, crack the encryption on this will. Let me see that. Oh, it's all ones and zeros, Dolores. You figure it out. <laughs> it is all ones and zeros. Clearly, it's in binary. Uncle Chuck was being clever. Maybe too clever. All right, and let's just have a quick look at the will. There we go. So we have to fix that. Okay. Let's this is just all in binary. Talk Should to be easy guy. to write a program to convert it to ASCII so I can read the will. Yes, Dolores, do you have a question about your uncle's stipulations? Okay, you can go through the stipulations again, but that's them there. We need Thimbleberry Pie, and we have to meet in his tomb, which is a bit creepy. And we have to um, get the uh, will encrypted. So we don't actually need to talk to him just yet. I just wanted to show you that. And if, if you do have any trouble, you can click on those again. Bye. I have but some work to do. Obviously, later, if you're following right this, here. you won't need any help with that. All right, we need to go to... First step is going to be to go into Dolores' bedroom. And once in the bedroom, what we want to do is we want to pick up this thing here right next to the computer, Graphics Basic. It's going to help us decode the will. So now we're going to use the Graphics Basic in the computer. My Commodore 64 is now supercharged with Graphics Basic. And now we're going to use the will in the computer. It's working. Whoever created Graphics Basic has a brilliant career ahead of them. <laughs> okay, and that's the result. So we're not finished decoding the will just yet. Hmm, I'm sure I converted the binary properly. Now it's all in hex. It must be encoded. I need to find the key to decode it. Maybe yeah. if I could remember Uncle Chuck's lucky number. He used it to win the lottery a few years back. This bit took me so much looking around that I ended up cracking it and looking it up online when I first played this. Um, but what we need to do is head to the uh, Nickel News, I believe that's on, is it on, I'm going to try and remember, on A Street, I think, yeah, A Street. And this number will be random, so we, we're trying to find Uncle Chuck's lucky number, 
and whether you remember or not, I certainly didn't, but there's a uh, newspaper in here about Uncle Chuck winning the lotto, and it's always this one here on the far left. So go and have a look at that. All right, lucky number 12 for me. Sometimes that'll be over 100. It's been very random. I've never seen it the same, and this is about the fifth time I've actually seen a playthrough now with um, a different number. So let's uh, remember, remember whatever your number is. Obviously, it's number 12 for me. Okay, and now we want to go back to the mansion. Okay, back into the bedroom. Dolores' bedroom, sorry. And we're gonna use the computer. Oops. It's my state-of-the-art Commodore yes, 64 yes, yes. with dual 1541 floppy drives and a blazingly fast 12 oh, hang on. baud modem. I I think we have to use the will. I just couldn't see it here, but because it always swaps my screen around. Anyway, use the will with the computer again. Let's see. I decoded it from binary and got a bunch of hex numbers. Knowing Uncle Chuck, he would have encrypted the will using the unbreakable exclusive ore and using his lucky number as the key. Okay, here goes. Okay. Less than 100. Uh, it's 12 is an even number, but your answers may be different depending on your number. Definitely ends with a two. And it starts with an odd number. And it starts with a one. The rest of the bits are irrelevant to cryptography. I'll just bitwise and them away. I did it. Okay, so we've decrypted the will. You can have a quick look at it. It won't give us any answers. Um, we can't read the rest at the moment. That's I did just it. the preamble. It's totally decoded now. I'll give it back to Mr. Balowick. And we'll just do that right now. We'll go back to the library. And that's one out of the three criteria done now. We've decoded the will. Now we need we need pi, and then we need to meet in the uh, Here's the decoded tomb. will, Mr. Balowick. Let me if see. you try and go to the tomb now, it is locked, so you can't get You've in You've done there. it, Dolores. One of Chuck's three stipulations is now fulfilled. The will is decoded. We still need a thimbleberry pie, and then we'll meet inside Chuck's opulent tomb. And the way to get into the tomb is going to be... Um, accessed by, uh, you might remember, Franklin also needs to go to the tomb and he is going to be our way in. So switch over to Franklin and go over to the elevator. And we're gonna have to zap the call button. Uh, where is it? Zap. Call the elevator. And head inside the elevator. Can't cope with the boredom anymore. Talk to me now. Okay, I'm not very good at talking to, you know, strangers, but I'll give it a try. Okay, we're going to talk to her and find out something about her. Um, and just ask her, maybe, I think it's this one, how come she's upset come all the time? So, you know, upset all the time. That's unfair. I'm not upset all the time. I'm just a little hungry right maybe now. Maybe she's that hungry. Angry. That happens to me too. There should be a word. Uh, all right, and we also need to know what, what can ghosts can eat. You know, eat. As a ghost, it's hard to find food that we can eat. My particular weakness has always been ice cream cake, but I'm stuck in this stupid elevator and I can't get any. So she wants some ice cream cake. Okay, we can just go back. Oh, we've got to say bye to bye, Clara, Clara so that we can get out of the elevator. And back over to ThimbleCon. Help, I'm a ghost. Head inside ThimbleCon. Okay, 
okay after that creepy scene <laughs> let's not worry about that right now though head over to the right hand side of ThimbleCon and talk to Virgil and he's got you can see it there if you talk to him you might mention it but there's a cake a ghost cake there behind him let's ask for some cake can I have some you know cake this is special ghost cake it's super rare and hard to get I'm not going to give you any unless you have a really good reason and Virgil really likes Clara, so let's uh, tell him that it's for her. How about Clara said she wants some, you know, cake? For Clara? That changes everything. For her, I'd do anything. Here, take a slice. Just make sure you tell her it's from me. I'm Thanks. pretty sure I'll that's that. the only way he would give it to you. All right. Let's See you go. Soon, Virgil. So we've got the cake. Uh, what we want to do now is chill the cake because Clara said she wants ice cream cake, not just normal cake. Uh, not normal cake. Voila! Now it's ice cream ghost cake. Perfect. And now we're going to go back to the elevator. And we're going to talk to Clara again. Oh, it's just the flap doodle again. Oh, that's not very nice. And ask her if she'd like some ice cream uh, ice cream ghost cake. Would you like this, you know, uh, ice cream ghost cake? Oh my, you shouldn't have. That's so kind of you. Actually, it's from Virgil. I think he, you know, likes you. Really? Well, I never. That's delightful of you to deliver it. Thank you so much. I feel much better already. Now, what did you want to ask me? Okay, now... This now, she would let us get into the penthouse if we click this. She'll let us go to the penthouse. But that won't help us get other characters into the penthouse and we do need to do that. So before we do that, we're gonna ask her, uh, we're gonna ask her a few questions and what we wanna know is what her favorite TV show is. And when she tells you, you do need to make sure you remember it. It may be different to what she tells me. Um, once again, it's another random thing in the game. So Clara, do you know how you died? I was dancing at the hotel ball with my husband, and then I felt a horrible pain in my side, and I woke up dead. I was in the hotel too, I think. I just remember a flash, and then I woke up dead. I think we were all murdered in the hotel. There is something creepy about this place. Certainly is. And asking her about getting bored, she'll uh, then start to talk about her um, like for TV. Don't you get bored being stuck here for all eternity? The first 50 years are hard, but then you get used to it. New guests show up, and it's fun to figure out what scares them. I also love this new invention you have called TV. Oh, I love when one of the guests is watching The Rich and the Soapy. That show is so funny. All right, The Rich and the Soapy for me. All right. Bye, and good luck, Clara. And what we need to do, once again... Uh, sorry, sorry, hang on. Company, thank you. I forgot to ask her to let us into the penthouse. So make sure you ask her that as well. Can I? But you know, please go to the penthouse now. All oh, right. I'm tired of listening to Xavier, that old fustalugs. Maybe you. You may not have to do this step, him. but oh, you know, I just want to make sure confrontation cover all I bases. Don't, know. <laughs> don't be so pigeon livered. You should stand up for yourself. Oh, okay. I suppose you're right. <laughs> Good. It's decided then. Just push that penthouse button for yourself when you're ready. I won't stop you anymore. Okay, but before we do that, we're actually going to go to floor number 10. And you may remember there was a TV sitting on the ground there. Okay, out we get on level 10. And what we're going to do is zap the uh, TV to turn it on. This channel is just static. I should find another channel. And we're going to continue to zap it. Oh, God, this elevator. Continue to zap it. It's now showing I love my cat. So no. Make sure it's the right show for you. Mine was the rich and soapy. It's now showing skiing for cash. It's now showing the rich and the soapy. Okay, and once you've got the right channel on the TV, go over and zap the call button so that the uh, doors open. What is that on the TV? Oh my, it's my favorite, the rich and the soapy. Elevator duty can wait. Well, at least for a little now. All right, and that's gonna preoccupy uh, Clara so that other people can now use the elevator and access the penthouse. 
All right, now we can switch back to Dolores and find your map. And first thing we want to do is actually go to the cemetery. There's just something we need from here. We can't get into um, Uncle Chuck's um, what you call it place where he's buried yet. His tomb, I think the game calls it. We just need to um, the first time you come here, you have to do this. You have to do this long walk all the way to the tomb. I think if you have to come back, it puts us straight at the tomb. And of course, his tomb is all the way at the end. Here it is. Okay. Now, if you try and go in, she doesn't even say anything. Let's see if we try and open it. I don't see a way to open it, but I see a switch inside. Anyway, that's what I'm here for. I'll show you that. We want to pick up hours. We're going to need those a little bit later on. Okay. And now what we want to do is go back to our map. And this time we want to go to A Street. Just getting a few things ready for this, um, for opening the tomb, basically. Right, head to A Street. And we're gonna look for the uh, bookstore. There's an occult bookstore all the way at the, at the end of A Street. Not sure if we've been, been there in this playthrough yet. I get a bit confused with what I've done on each different playthrough that I've been doing. Uh, I've got a couple of different, I've got the stream playthrough that I the did. The future and is a never run. written. All right, now what we need to do is push this ladder so that it lines up with the other ladder or the gap in it, basically, just so that we can climb up here. And we want to climb up this second ladder all the way to the top. Okay, and once we're here, we want to pick up, I think it's called the Cursed Book. There we go. It's the Book of the Dead. Take it if you wish. It's on the house. But Beware! Beware of what? Huh, <laughs> nothing. It just sounded ominous. Yeah. So, she lets us take the book, and now we got to... Before we can use the map, we actually have to get all the way back down off the ladder. Of course, it's not easy to get down. The cursor won't let me just hold it for some reason. Here we go. A flower from Oops. the cemetery. Didn't mean that. Okay, now we can use the map. And we're going to the hotel. Awesome. And we're going to go get in the elevator and go to the penthouse. Now I got it. There we go. Okay. Now, obviously, Clara is preoccupied. So this is the first time we'll be able to get to the penthouse. And we actually needed a human character to do this. I'll show you why in just a moment. Ah, wrong button. Get out. These symbols that are on the door there, Who's that you'll now? see. This is unbelievable. An alive human in my penthouse. Cleta's in so much trouble next time I see her. Uh, yeah, these symbols on the door here, if you came up here with Franklin, even though we can make it to the penthouse right now, he can't get past these magical symbols. But human, a human character can just open the door and go in. Let's uh, find the light switch. I can't remember which side it's on. Where is it? No. There it is. Let's uh, turn the light switch on. Okay, and now what we want to do is we need to use the Book of the Dead, or the Cursed Book. It actually is called Book of the Dead now. No wonder I can't keep track. They've changed the name. That First it was Cursed Book, now it's Book of the Dead. Use it on the podium. And then you need to use the flowers on the Book of the Dead. 
The book is glowing. All right, and now we need to switch back to Franklin. And we're gonna go into the elevator. The elevator isn't on this floor. Oops, we gotta call it first. And we're gonna send him up to the uh, penthouse as well. I can't believe I finally made it to the penthouse. Who's that now? What are you doing here? Um, you know, just looking about. I suppose I'll allow that as long as you don't annoy me. Oh, we're not going to annoy you for now. We're going to go into the secret entrance. And we are going to talk to... The Book of the Dead. Believe it or not. Mumbo Jumbo. Mumbonius Jumbonius. Let me visit my dead relatives. There we go. Looks like Chuck got a tomb to fit his ego. And we are going to visit the tomb. Head inside. And we are going to zap this switch here, which will then allow other people to come in later. All right. Now I'll switch back to Dolores again. And we are going to go to Ricky's Cakes. She's on B Street. All right. Now, if you remember, the third thing that we need, or one of the three things that we need, is a thimbleberry pie. If you go to the diner, they say they sell thimbleberry pie, but you'll see that there are. They don't Hi, have Dolores. Anymore. They say there's oh, no let's thimbleberries go over to the counter left. where we can talk. Welcome to Ricky's Tubes. How can I help you? But Ricky used to sell thimbleberry pie, so let's ask her about one. Ricky, you make such great thimbleberry pie. Can I get one? I'm sorry, hon. I'm out of the pie making biz. Strictly tubes now. Oh no! I have a problem then. In order to hear my uncle's will read, I need one of your famous thimbleberry pies. Well, in honor of your Uncle Chuck, I'd make an exception. But there just aren't any more thimbleberries left. Your uncle had them harvested to extinction. Oh, that's a problem. So, just gotta tell her there must be some somewhere. There must be some somewhere. It's sad, isn't it? The last thimbleberries were spotted out in the old forest. Not the forest. I always hated it in there. <laughs> yes, pretty spooky. No one goes there unless they have to. People have been lost in there for days. Days! And I heard some never make it out alive. It's true. I've heard those stories too. And then there's the old bear problem. So, first thing, you'll need some thimbleberry picking gloves. You know how those thorns can leave you breaking out in welts. I just happen to have an old pair I could loan you. Thanks. All right, so now we've got the gloves and we know where to go and pick some thimbleberries so that she can make the pie for us. So open up your map. We're gonna to go to a new place called the Trailhead. Head there. All right, once you're here at the uh, the trailhead, heading over to the right, I don't know why, why George is doing here. But anyway, heading over to the right, once you pass this part of the screen, and it says here, walk to spooky forest trail. Everything here is going to be random. Each path, don't worry about the sound of the bear. Um, each path leads you somewhere random. You could pop out just about anywhere. And we just need to walk from path to path until we find some thimbleberries. And you'll see them, these red berries on, um, on bushes. I just walk into just random path. Oh, oh, I just missed it. My bad. <laughs> I was trying to t tell you guys what to do and I didn't even uh, grab the berries. So let's just keep walking down paths again. I can't just go back the way I came because it just, it's random. So there's some. So let's walk over to this bush here. All right, and I'm gonna use the gloves. Make sure you use the gloves. Use gloves on thimbleberries. Oh, 
All right, so now we've got the berries. Now we just need to find our way out. And once again, it's going to be random, but I picked the first one I picked has taken me straight out. And once we get out here, I don't know where Spock's going. We can then use the map to go back to B Street. And back to Ricky. And once again, Dolores. To Ricky. Oh, let's go over to the counter where we can talk. I'll Welcome to Ricky's Tubes. How can I help you? Said give berries. Oh, there we go. The first option. I have the thimble berries. Can you please make me the pie? You found them. Good for you. And no welts. I was very careful. And also, your gloves. Won't be needing them now. Thank you. I'll go make it now. Won't be a jiffy. Uh, Here's your I'm not sure that's how it would sound if you made a pie, but it's probably how Thank it would you. sound if I made a pie, I'll tell you that. Um, now, there's only um, a little bit to go here in part four of the game, and I'll just let you guys know there's only two more videos after this. We're going to cover part five and six in the next video, and then parts seven, eight, and nine will be covered in the, well, I was going to say the final video, but it's what I mean is the final video for this playthrough. And then we'll do a separate video for a really, really quick playthrough of the casual setting of the game or the casual difficulty. All right, just wanted to explain that for anyone that's wondering. All right, let's go to our map and we're gonna to go to the mansion and to the library. We have got everything we need to get this uh, will reading done. All right, up into the library again. <laughs> Doug's digging down there Dig again. In. Dig in. Okay, here we are in the library. Now, as we head over, you'll see the lawyer and everyone here waiting. As soon as we give the lawyer the pie, that is going to be the end of this part and the end of the video, guys. I wanna thank you all very, very much for watching. I hope this is helping you guys out. Hope we're uh, helping you get that gamer score. And uh, I hope you're enjoying both the video and the game. Like I said, thanks for watching. If you are enjoying it, give us a thumbs up. Subscribe to my channel. Consider going over and watching me stream things over on Twitch and following and subscribing there as well if you can. And don't forget, you can join Aussie's Army for just $1 over on Patreon as well. All of these things really, really help me out as I try and grow this channel and uh, make this a real thing for you guys to continue watching in the future. Anyway, that is enough of that. Now we are gonna give the pie to the lawyer. That'll be the end, and I will catch you all next time. Mr. Balowick, here's the freshly baked thimbleberry pie. All three of Chuck's stipulations are now fulfilled. I'll meet you all in the tomb.